Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. We will have another interesting topic this time. Many students still find it difficult to do genetic crosses like monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross, and predict the possible offsprings and uh, predict the phenotypic and the genotypic ratios. So our topic this time is the use of Punnett square in genetics. This will be very helpful in predicting the possible genotypes, phenotypes, and corresponding ratios. In the early 1900s, a doctor by the name of Reginald Punnett developed a method for studying genetics by using diagrams called the Punnett squares. So this looks like a window pane where for monohybrid cross you just need to have uh, four squares just like what is shown in this figure. Punnett squares can be used to predict the probability that certain traits will be expressed in offspring when parental genotypes are known. Now, Punnett squares can be used to predict both the genotypic and the phenotypic ratios of the offspring and they help determine the possible genotypes of the parents by analyzing phenotypes of the offspring. Now, what are the different steps in uh, using the Punnett square? So, let's do this step by step. The first step is to determine the genotypes of the parent organisms. And then you write down your cross or the mating, you know, the genotypes of the parents. So, identify your male and then the female. And then you draw the Punnett square. So, for example, here, you determine first the genotype. So, for example, you have a homozygous tall and a homozygous short. And you want to do a cross between these two. So, you will have to draw a Punnett square that looks like this. Now, next to that, we will have to split the letters of the genotype for each parent and put them outside the Punnett square. So you will have to choose whether you put the, the parent or, the, or the, the father on top and the mother on the side so it can look like this. Okay. And then next to that is you determine the possible genotypes of the offspring by filling in the Punnett square. So what do we do so that you won't get confused is first we put all the capital letters. So it looks like this. Just bring them down to each of the squares. So now that we have filled in all the uh, capital letters, we do now the small letters. So we do it like this so that we have now to summarize the results. So what are the genotypes and the phenotypes of the offspring? So the genotypes are, the, we have here a 100% heterozygous for tall. When we say heterozygous, we have a capital T and a small t. And then for the phenotype, we have here 100% tall plants. Why? You remember tall is dominant over recessive. So that every time there is the presence of tall, it will mask the effect of the short so that a big letter T and a small T will give you a phenotype of tall. So these are the basic steps in uh, doing or using a Punnett square. So now what happens if we do a monohybrid cross? Mono means we will be considering one trait. Hybrid means that each trait will contain different characteristics such as if we let the if one generation self-fertilize, the next monohybrid cross would be it between heterozygous tall and another heterozygous tall plants. So we have the genotypes determined as 
one big T and one small T for father for example and another like that also for the mother then we draw our Punnett square with this corresponding general type so remember that here we just uh, brought down the T from up here like that and then from here to that so basically it's just the cross section of this letters and um, note of this it would always be good to write first the uppercase or the big letter and then the small letter so in this f1 self-fertilization monohybrid cross we have the following genotypes so here one homozygous for tall and then we have this and this two heterozygous for tall and then we have here one homozygous for short giving us a one is to two is to one genotypic ratio so what about phenotypes so the phenotypes are of course these three having the capital letter t would have would be tall so we have three tall plants and one short plants giving a three is to one phenotypic ratio now let me reveal to you the secret of the punnett square now the key to the punnett square is first determine the gametes of each parent how by splitting the genotypes of each parent if this is your cross so you have homozygous for tall and homozygous for short then you will have the gametes as two big t's i mean like one big t another big t and then a small t and another small t so these are all the gametes you need to have this all four uh, gametes once you have the gametes so one big t one big t cross with small small t and a small t then draw this punnett square you put this gametes here and another here and then do the crosses now let's have some practice problems for example number one a pea plant heterozygous predominant green pod color is crossed with a pure recessive yellow pod plant show the cross and all the phenotypic and genotypic ratios of the possible offspring then here's another problem in humans brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes what are the phenotypes and genotypes of the possible offspring of the cross between two heterozygous brown eyed parents so uh, if you would do these problems i would appreciate if you can leave a comment on your answers to the following questions so these are for you to practice at home now let us go to dihybrid cross earlier it was monohybrid now this time a dihybrid cross so what is a dihybrid cross this one describes a mating experiment between two organisms that are identically hybrid for two traits a hybrid organism is the one that is heterozygous which means that it carries two different alleles at a particular genetic position or locus now for example you have uh, heterozygous for round yellow seed round is a seed texture and yellow is the color of the seed so you can see that you have one big r and one small r one big y and one small y so they are both heterozygous for two traits a typical dihybrid cross usually results in a 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio of the offspring. In this case, you will have 9 out of 16 offspring, uh, which are dominant for both traits. 
and then 3 out of 16 of the offspring are dominant for one trait and recessive for the other and then 1 over 16 of the offspring are recessive for both traits. So a dihybrid cross, again I just would like to emphasize that this is a cross that shows the possible offspring for two traits. So for example, we will cross a heterozygous individual with another heterozygous individual. So in this case, we have fur color, dominant is black, and recessive is white. And a coat texture, the dominant is rough, and the smooth is the recessive. So the genotypes will be, you have one big B, one small B, one big R, and one small R for both parents. Okay, so remember these are the genotypes. Now, in dihybrid cross, so we represent here one for dad and another one is for mom. So for step one, find all possible gametes that can be made from each parent. So how do we find possible gametes? So remember first that each gamete must have one B and one R. It doesn't have to be all capital but what I mean is it has to have one B either small or big and one R either small or big so how do we do this so first we have this combination so we get one big B and one big R all together we put that and then one big B and one small R we put that together as well and then uh, one small B and one big R, we put that together, and then we have one small B and one small R. So these are now the possible gametes of this genotype. Okay, so let's have a practice. What if we have two big Bs and two small Rs? What are the possible gametes? You will have big B and small R. Okay, and then what if you have... Uh, one big H, small H, and two big T's. What are the possible gametes? It will be like this. Okay. So, when we do the dihybrid cross, we have determined already the possible gametes. So, what do we do next? We have to make sure that you don't only do this for the the male uh, portion but you also do it for the female part okay. so now the next part is draw a punnett square so this time because we already have dihybrid cross then you will need 16 squares so we have now a punnett square and then we have to arrange all possible gametes for dad on top of the Punnett square like this. So that's coming from daddy and uh, mom along the left side. Yeah, and so that's coming from mommy. So we are now down to the fourth step where we are going to fill in the Punnett square with all the possible genotypes of the offspring. So let's start here in... Uh, the father side <laughs> here okay so we are going to bring down each of the letters so we will not miss a single letter so let's start with the big b and we are going to fill in down the column with all big b's there and then next here we are going to bring down the big b again and we are going to fill in the whole column with all big B's. Okay. Next, here we have the small B. So we'll fill in the column with all small B's. And here we have another small B. So we bring down that. And Okay. So the next is we are going to get the B from the mother. So let's start from the, this big B. And we are going to fill in the whole row with all big B's okay. and then here we have a big B also so big B across the row 
here we have a small b so small b here and all small b's across the row and here another small b so small b here and all small b's across the row so we're done with the b now let's go to the r let's start from the father so r down there a big r and all big r's down the column here we have a small r there and all small r's down the column here we have a big r there and we're gonna fill that in with all big r's down the column and here we have a small r there and all small r's down the column so here we go the we get the r from the mother so here big r there and all big r's across the row here a small r there and all small r's across the row this one here is a big r there and all big r's there and small r there and all small r's across the row so these are all the possible genotypes of the offspring here you notice that uh, it's still rumble so some do have uh, small letters first before the big letters here so what we do next is to rearrange the letters we write the capital letter first before the small letters so we can have this there so now it's all arranged having all the capital letter first before the small letter next step we have to determine now the phenotypes by answering these questions how many of the offspring would have a black rough coat how many of the offspring would have a black smooth coat and how many of the offspring would have a white rough coat how many of the offspring would have a white smooth coat so let's see so first let's answer how many of the offspring would have black rough coat so you will see it's all those written in black black rough coat so what's uh, the determiner here as long as you have one big b and one big r then you will have black rough coat next how many of the offspring would have black smooth coat so black and smooth coat so all those written in pink would be black smooth coat so what's our determiner as long as you have one big b and two small r that will be black smooth coat next how many of the offspring would have a white rough coat white rough coat so all those written in blue are white rough coat so what's our determiner there has to be two small b's and one big r at least okay two small b's and one big r and then last how many of the offspring would have a white smooth coat so that one in orange is the white smooth uh, coat so the determiner here there has to be two small b's and two small r's so these are all the uh, genotypes of the offspring now the phenotypic ratio here is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so you have 9 black rough coat so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so that's 9 uh, black rough coat and then you have three black smooth coat so one two and three you and then oh what did i say nine it has to be three three black smooth coat 
and then three white rough coat so one two three and then one white smooth coat here so we have this phenotypic ratio okay so let's have a practice problem in rabbits gray fur is dominant over white fur and black eye is dominant over red eye a male rabbit with a general type two big g's and two small b's is crossed with a female rabbit with a general type two small g's and one i mean heterozygous for the brown eye so the questions are what are the possible gametes what are the gametes of the offspring and you have to show this in the Punnett square what are the possible phenotypes and what is the phenotypic ratio so do this where you are as your practice using uh, what we have learned in this lesson thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this one and you got something from this lesson so if you are new to this channel please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be updated of our new upload and that's all. Bye for now. Keep safe everyone. Bye-bye.